Welcome to the Austin LGBT Chamber podcast. We are going to talk local business news, including Austin Rent, groups working to bring MLB to town, and Tesla using a new state law to sidestep Austin regulations. We'll be right back. But first, let us welcome ourselves. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Oh my gosh, I love our crowd. (laughs) They working hard. I know, I think they're a little louder with me running it. Yeah, well, Colton Ashabranner. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Hello. (laughs) Yeah, marketing communications manager. Um, I'm Amy Clooney, membership operations. And we're missing our fearless leader today, which is why you're hearing a different octave. Yeah. <laughs> as we open. So if I mess up on the sounds, don't hate me. Our president, CEO, producer, sound mixer. Yes. Host. Yeah. Office mom. MC. E-bike riding. Yeah. Queen. Yes. E-bike riding hound in the streets <laughs> of Austin just tearing it up uh, is not with us today. She's got some family stuff going on, but we're holding down the fort. Yeah. And hopefully after this podcast, we still have jobs. (laughs) (laughs) And we miss her. How was, how was last week? We were gone. Oh man. We loved it. Yeah. We did all the things. It was very hot. We were in Palm Springs for the NGLCC conference. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was a long week of learning and laughter and networking and, uh, um, yes, it was very hot, but I think we had a great time. It was yeah, w- and we had a little bit of play. After. Very yeah, very very cool to connect with people from different chambers all over the country. Yes, members from all over the country. Yeah, and um, a lot of our members were there too, sponsors and members alike. And we got to see um, Fiona Dawson with Free Lion Productions walk the stage, and yes. a, an official inductee to to certification with LGBTBE. And then um, some former members that have moved away, too, which was kind of cool to see that they're still engaged. And the biz pitch. Oh, my gosh. So cool. Donna's Donna Zoo, I think is how you say it. Um, so super cool idea. Basically. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Making making websites more accessible and inclusive. I think they had a stat that was like 96 percent of all websites are not accessible to the hearing impaired. Um, and I think we're guilty of that. We are, we did yeah, ask I for think, help. Yeah, so uh, we're going to connect with them and see how we can even be better. Um, but this is like if this is something you should consider, especially as an Austin resident with our uh, community here that are hard of hearing. When we put those cool videos and stuff up on our websites, um, if you can't hear them, you're not getting the info that you need. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we got to go to Trixie Motel. Oh my gosh, we. <laughs> We got onion dip, okay? At Cigarette the Motel. Mom's onion dip. Cigarette Mom. Like 1981, y'all kids need a snack. Um, here's a plate of Ruffles and some Lay's onion dip. It's <laughs> as healthy, <laughs> healthy as it comes. So uh, we had a great time um, exploring and also melting. but Mostly melting. Yeah, but it's, it's a long five days of... Uh, of being in Palm Springs and we were ready to come back, but it was a great trip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this weekend we'll be out for Austin Pride. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, and we may have a special surprise for you. Uh, we're, we're trying to work it out. We will have another podcast. Yeah, you get a bonus podcast this week. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, we're it may take, be live. Yeah, we're taking it off site. So this will be a first for us. We're going to be up in the sky. So if you see us, um, make sure you scream and holler and hoot and give us a wave. We're going to be on the balcony of the Stephen F. Austin Hotel. Right next to the Paramount sign. Yes. So um, look out for us. Our banner will be there. So you'll see the big banner and... Um, uh, just give us a holler and we will give you a shout out as we're live on the podcast. Hopefully live. Hopefully. Yeah. Live. Hopefully we're live. new at this. Obviously without Tina here, we're, we're, uh, we're figuring it out, but yeah, well, let's get into some local headlines and talk chamber news. All right. 
right, rent in Austin is down, but many renters still struggle to find housing they can afford, according to the Austin Monitor. During the pandemic, rent prices surged in 21 and 22. The average monthly rent in Austin and the surrounding suburbs rose nearly 29%. Incomes grew over that time, but nowhere near as quickly. Since 2019, the number of cost burden renters has grown to 1.6%. That percentage might sound small, but a senior research associate at the Joint Center for Housing Studies at Harvard University said that equates to 36,000 more renters in the Austin area paying for homes they can't afford. The result is that families have had to cut costs in other ways by foregoing essentials such as food or transportation. Common theme here. Yeah, rent is expensive. Yeah, you're a renter. What are you, what are you mm-hmm. feeling? How, how have you seen it fluctuate over the years, and especially being in a pandemic? I will say I have not seen the prices drop personally. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is like um, something that ties into uh, the federal ledge kind of finally cracking down on stuff and, and money coming down, but um, I, I don't know how you do it. I, everything, if you are living in Austin and you were fortunate enough not to be in like a dual income house, wow, congrats. Like, cause it is, I mean, we own, or the bank owns our house, right? But we own, and I've been there. I was a renter for over a decade. I get it. But ne- with today's prices, uh, 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 that is so tough. Outrageous. Mm. Um, but there's like a little graph here that shows year over year rent prices began dropping in May of 2023. Um, but allegedly, if y'all, yeah, allegedly. No. If y'all want to, <laughs> if y'all want to check it out, the Austin Business Journal is where this story's from. Yeah, we love it, but we hate it. And I would really love to see this graph come down a lot further. Me too. Yes. Let's see if we can make it happen. Oh. Up next, home run idea. Groups are working to bring MLB to Austin. How realistic is this? Over the last two years, rumors have circulated about high-level meetings with MLB officials and team owners. Some big-name former players are said to be involved, but it's unclear if any local officials have met directly with MLB. While those MLB wins have swirled for a long time, many questions remain, chief among them, whether expansion from the current 30-team threshold is even on the table. If it happens, the league will likely add two teams. What? Texas already has two franchises with the Houston Astros, Ghostros, and Texas Rangers out of Arlington. I meant to push that oh, a couple seconds ago. But that's I okay. Um, that's really cool. Wait, are we scratching at the Astros or the Rangers, though? Be careful with your response. Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big baseball fan. Um, Too slow? But I, oh my gosh, I'm asleep. Uh, maybe but we could I, get banana ball though. Like if we could get a banana ball team. I would fully support that. Oh, what so are their fun. cheerleaders called again? The, the banana nanas. The banana nanas. And the, and the dad bod. What is it? There's the dad bod something. The dad bod mod squad or some, I don't know. Something I don't like know. that. But, um. So cute. But I'm a Stroh's fan. I'm here for a ball game. I love going to the ballpark. Um, It is a little slow. However, I don't think this would be one of those sports where I would have a hard time separating from my Astros. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was a Dynamo fan. So when we got Austin FC, it was an easy move for me. Um, It was a brand new team, brand new formed team. So I don't know if like the MLB and local officials would look at moving a team which was actually on the table for MLS Mm -hmm. we're looking at um Columbus crew I think and I was not really here for it but was excited to go to games but active Austin FC supporter I would have a hard time with baseball but I would still go Listos. yeah and like the money that it brings into the town like people we're we are desperately looking for something else to do that is not just going to the bar all the time um, I love, I'm here for live music. I love it, mm-hmm. but I do love to mix it up with but another activity. Speaking of live music, you know, we need a sports team with a massive stadium 
so that I can see Beyonce in Austin. <laughs> so if MLB is the thing that makes that happen, bring it. You have my support. <laughs> the Austin Bays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. All right, our favorite guy is causing a fuss again. Tesla uses new state law to sidestep Austin regulations at Gigafactory. Tesla's huge electric vehicle factory in Eastern Travco will no longer be subject to City of Austin environmental regulations after the company used a new state law to have the property removed from the city's extraterritorial jurisdiction. Controversial law, which some municipalities are challenging in court, allows landowners on the fringes of major cities to petition for such removal, freeing them up to develop with fewer restrictions. The law, known as Senate Bill 2038, was approved last year with strong support from developers. Wow. Elon Mr. Musk. Musk. <laughs> Sir, you really know how to make waves. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's kind of wild to me that a company can, like, use a law to remove themselves from the ETJ. Yes. Like, but I need to look up this law. But the that, whole this is this is like this is weird to me because the whole point of going EV is meant to be allegedly meant to be environmentally friendly. But now you don't even have that oversight, which you know I have shared. I'm not a big fan of how the batteries are made. I'm not a big fan of how there are questions about how recyclable and renewable they are. Um, so what does that mean for like? Waste? What does that mean for energy? I don't know. But it sounds it sounds like a jerk move to me. Maybe I don't know yeah. too much about it. It sounds like the opposite of environmentally friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but what do I know? Yeah, buy your new EV that has no environmental regulations attached to it. And also, if you wait four more months, you don't have to get inspection. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Terrible, awful, awful. I just said awful again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, let's get into some chamber news. Join the Austin LGBT Chamber Health and Wellness Committee on August 12th at noon for an exciting webinar that is Monday, August 12th. Head to our events calendar and register now. Speakers include St. David's Healthcare, Out Wellness, Life Healing Nutrition, Ally Medical, Ellie Mental Health, and Vivant Health. Love them. This is going to be amazing. Um, really just giving uh, the opportunity to these members to reintroduce themselves to the Health and Wellness Committee. Uh, we kind of calmed down a little bit last year after the holiday toy drive. So we're excited to be back in action. Yeah. And it should be a cool little webinar. With, and some new faces. Oh, yeah, cool. lots of new faces. Yeah, I love this. The Austin LGBT Chamber of Commerce's Arts Committee, in partnership with KMFA Classical 89.5, will present the fourth annual Austin Arts Mixer on Thursday, August 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. There will be more than 30 local Austin arts organizations on hand to share information about upcoming shows, projects, and seasons. Um, You can also enjoy bites from Alfred's Catering and Event Planning and sips by Tito's Handmade Vodka, Still Austin Whiskey, and our friends at Best Little Wine and Books. Um, Network with other attendees and visit with our arts partners. That event is one of my favorite events of the year. It really is. He doesn't shut up about it. It really is. I love <laughs> I love a free drink, a free snack, and artsy things. I love a snack. I love a cigarette mom snack. Me too. I hope I hope Alfred <laughs> brings onion dip. <laughs> oh, I love the best little is coming all the way up from small town Lockhart to be a part of this event. I Me mean, too. Oh, she's fantastic and really has done wonders for the community in Lockhart. And now with the small town big pride program it's working yeah she coming up to austin y'all she working with austin programs and and events it's so cool and if you missed the small town big pride trip to lockhart you really should make your way over there 
so many cool businesses. Um, go to our Small Town Big Pride page on our website and check them out. Best Little is like one of 15, and they're all so amazing. Truly. I don't know. The sense of community, it yeah. was just beautiful yeah. that day. Yeah, and stay tuned for, for more Small Town Big Pride stuff. We'll, we'll get into that on another podcast. But please join us for this Arts Mixer because um, this is actually going to be my first time attending. Oh, I can't believe that. I know. Oh. I'm terrible. We're going to have so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. If you want to become a member of the chamber or join us for some events, visit austinlgbtchamber.com. If you want to be a guest or a podcast sponsor, email us at info at austinlgbtchamber.com. Be sure to check out past episodes of the show. Follow us and check out new episodes every Friday at noon, wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you and see you next time.